Well, good evening, everyone. Uh, spring in the air. We have our final, we believe, final men's basketball game of the abbreviated 2021 season as we welcome you inside James Work Gymnasium for tonight's matchup between the Delaware Valley University Aggies and the Fairleigh Dickinson University College of Florham Devils. Don't worry, we won't call them that every time tonight. FDU Florham and the Aggies wrapping up the regular season here against each other, the second of two meetings between these two teams. Delaware Valley winning last night's game handily, a 65 to 40 victory on the men's side for Del Val, as the Aggies had a big night from the freshman, Jordan Gomes, last night. With uh, Gomes, uh, pull up the numbers, Gomes had 21 points last night. Prior to that, he had 13 points all season. And yes, a short season, but Gomes who scored nine points in his first game at home or on the road against Arcadia, uh, had just four points the next eight games, but last night he really found his uh, range. He was nine for 13 from the field. Not a lot of threes, and that's fine. He was one for one. He's a forward. Six rebounds. And uh, Delaware Valley more or less uh, coasted to an easy victory. I said 65 to 40. It was 63 to 40. Also, big game from Ryan Black. He had 15 points. Matt Paulus with 12 points. And it all added up for, to a victory for Delaware Valley as the uh, Aggies for the second week in a row uh, won a Thursday night, actually third week in a row, Delaware Valley won a, uh, a Thursday night game. And the Aggies now three and five, two and three in conference and looking to close out this portion of the season on a high note. Is this the last game of the season period for Del Val? Probably not. Delaware Valley, uh, if the uh, seedings hold right now, DeSales would be the top seed in the conference, although DeSales is down six to Lycoming at the half uh, up in Williamsport. If Lycoming wins that game, then those are the two teams that will play next Thursday for the Freedom Championship. If Lycoming wins both games, they'll host. If DeSales wins one of two, they'll host. And if uh, DeSales wins both, then that may open up the door for Arcadia or someone else to play for the, uh, the conference championship. Rest of the conference, three through whatever, whoever's left in playing at that point next week, would play three through whatever on the Commonwealth side. So the Aggies, I mean, could theoretically play Albright for a third time this year. After not playing them for several years, they could play them three times in a month, uh, or they could play someone else from that conference. That conference, the Commonwealth side, the teams are very tightly packed together. Widener, Stevenson, uh, Lebanon Valley, who the Aggies played earlier this year, all kind of tightly compacted with each other, and uh, that could be the final opponent of the year for Del Val as the, uh, as the athletic directors in the conference tries to get everybody one more game. We'll keep an eye on the women's game. We'll focus on the men tonight, but the women tonight, we believe, uh, as we talked about extensively last night, if the Aggies win tonight against FDU Florham, and Florham is winless on both the women and the men's side, the Aggies would <laughs> kind of inexplicably go from having a two-year losing streak to in the conference championship game in two weeks. <laughs> as the Aggies would, uh, we believe they would have the uh, tiebreaker with Mr. Accordia and because of the strange rules where winning percentage matters more than who you beat, Delaware Valley, despite losing both games to Arcadia, would potentially be in the championship game against DeSales next Thursday night. So we'll keep an eye on that one and uh, hope for a good one in this one as the Aggies take on an FDU Florham team that, much like the women's side last night, where we talked about really how nothing had gone right uh, from a range of problems, from games being canceled repeatedly. A very strange schedule has been the case for everybody. A lot of that holds here for FDU Florham as well. Now the Devils have a bigger roster on the men's side, the women's side last night. Uh, they really only had nine players or so and they played them all, but uh, they have had a rough go of things all year at FDU, Flo uh, the FDU Florham women. They're averaging 39 points per game and only had 40 last night. Men have more of their players back, including Oliver Ortman, who put on a shooting exposition here last year. The Aggies, Damian Washington had 42 or 43 points against FDU Florham, and the Aggies still lost because Oliver Ortman went out of his mind from behind the arc. Oliver has struggled this season from three, but 
the Devils uh, played themselves into the conference playoffs last year, and they'll also be looking to finish the season on a high note. Devils ready for the national anthem. Aggies as well. Please direct your attention to the flag. Delaware Valley and FDU Florham to close out the abbreviated regular season here. Devils with an 0-5 record. Ended up playing what looked like to be the top two teams in the conference their first four games, and they went about as well as you'd expect. Losses by 25, 34, 26, and 50 in their first four games. Winnable matchup with Wilkes postponed and wiped off the books, and then last night's game the Yankees won by 23. Devils starting lineup looks like this. Start with the sophomore guard, six foot two from South River, New Jersey. Number two, Joseph Nigro. The sophomore guard from Scotch Plains, New Jersey. Number four, Tommy Drabolis. Senior guard, talked about him just a moment ago from West Essex, New Jersey, Oliver Ortman. Jefferson Township freshman product, number 21, the team's leading scorer, Matthew Johnson. And rounding things out, the sophomore guard from South River, New Jersey, number 25, Derek Whittaker. Devils are coached by Jeff Slonovic, I believe in his third season with FDU Florham. For the Aggies, same starting lineup as we have seen all season long. Matt Paulus, the senior guard out of Salisbury, will play point guard. Joined in the backcourt by the, the junior from Spring City, Pennsylvania, Nestor Diaz. Uh, Paula Ford for Delaware Valley, junior, six foot two from Horsham, Pennsylvania, Ryan Black in the middle for the Aggies, the senior six foot six forward from Sicklerville, New Jersey, Thomas Ibadapo, and the shooting guard for the Aggies, or the swing guard, a senior from Darby, Pennsylvania, Purnell Gee, Aggies coached by Mark Seidenberg in his fifth year as the head of the Aggies program. Lovelovic coming off a year where he was the Freedom Conference Coach of the Year for taking the, Aggie, or the Aggies, the Devils, to the NCAA Tournament. Career record now of, oh, well, you like to give them a mulligan for this season, 19 and 37. Devils win the tip. They're wearing the blue jerseys with the largest, new, brightest numerals on the back I've ever seen. These things are enormous. <laughs> could read them off a highway going at 60 miles an hour from a mile away. They're definitely PennDOT approved as a turnover by the Devils on their first possession. Paulus to Gee. Gee gets the score and the foul as the Devils had a man too far underneath the arc and Gee with a three-point play opportunity. One thing we commented on extensively last year when these two teams met, although it's less relevant now, the Devils are very small. They do not have a lot of height. Last year, the Aggies, Damian Washington, tortured them in a game where 
The Devils kind of had the last laugh. Now, I don't know why there's... Was that not a three-point play? I don't know why you would give two free throws on a three-point play, but it's either three to nothing or two to nothing, depending on what that just was. I don't know. Devils with the basketball. Well, they called the foul on the floor, okay. So I guess the basket did not count, so I guess it's three to nothing? Not sure. Shot up and good. Correct you, Florham. Tommy Drabos with the basket. And again, we'll just go with what the scoreboard says, although I'm not sure what just happened because it looked like it was a three-point play, but he took two free throws, which would make it four to nothing, or four to two. Black with the ball. Nestor Diaz, and they just changed the scoreboard to two to two. And now they'll change it to four to two. It's Nestor Diaz with the basket for Delvell. So that, they rule that he was fouled before he took the shot, but in the act of shooting. I, I'm not sure how that computes, but 4-2 at uh, Delaware Valley. Turn around, shot is blocked. If he was fouled before the act of shooting, that should not have been a shooting foul, that should have been the first team foul. So it either should have been one free throw or no free throws, not two. And now they just changed the scoreboard to five to two again. So I really don't know what, <laughs> what's going on. Three on the way, up and good. Derek Whitaker with the basket. And we believe we're tied at five. We'll go with that. Aggies with the basketball. On the season, FDU Florham is shooting 19% from three. That is very poor. Nestor Diaz hands off for Paulus. Paulus for Diaz. Diaz with one on the clock, gets it off, shot no good. Rebound controlled by the Devils. This is Ortman up the floor, who's small but stocky. Three on the way for the Devils, rattles up and in for Joseph Nigro. And if that last name sounds familiar, it should. Mario Nigro, Joseph's older brother, was the tailback here for Delaware Valley for a couple of years. Pernell Gee outside to Paulus. 8-5 Devils. Gee behind his back. Paulus thinks about a three. Pernell will take it. Line drive, back rim, or side rim, no good. And Nigro corrals it for FDU. Whitaker quickly the other way. Now the Devils will reset. Johnson. Dribbles and runs into his own man, Ortman. Diaz chases. Ortman will fire up. He had more time than that, but ends up being a long offensive rebound for Florham. I think Oliver thought he had a lot less time than he did. He had about 12 on the shot clock when he fired that up. Three on the way, up and good, and Joseph Nigro was two for two. And the Devils have hit three threes in the first three minutes, and it's 11 to five FDU. Aggies with the basketball. Paulus. In for Guy and now for Ibadapo. Guy down low for Thomas. Thomas leaves it short. Looking for a foul, nothing there. After you floor him down the floor. Up by six. Look for Whitaker, Whitaker for three, no, and Guy grabs the rebound and he looks to push. Down the floor, Nestor Diaz, Diaz tough shot, but Diaz with good body control. Nestor has four, Aggies down four. Diaz on the season, averaging a little under seven points per game is whistle blown on the shot attempt. 
Aggies as a team are averaging 65.3, giving up almost exactly the same amount. And the foul will send Ortman to the free throw line. Free throw on the way is up and good for Oliver Ortman. Among the Devils' woes, free throw shooting is included. They're shooting 63% on the season. Although Ortman not having those problems himself, he's 10 for 14 now. He and Johnson, who are the team's leading scorers, are both shooting free throws very well. 13-7, Jordan Gomes has checked in for DelVal, as has Dariel Medina. So first two subs of the game for the Aggies. Devils made a handful, we'll get to them on their next possession. Medina gets himself into trouble. Paulus with four on the clock, that's an air ball. And Devils corral the rebound. So in now for FDU floor, number 10, sophomore guard John Bennett. That's John right there. That's Joe Nigro. He and Ortman remain in the game. And on the wing, that's Matthew Johnson. Three from Whitaker is good. Well, it looked like the Devils brought a bunch of players in. They actually only switched one out. And another three for Florham. That is their fourth three. They're averaging about one per minute here. <laughs> it's 16 to seven with five minutes gone. Diaz for Paulus. Jordan Gomes as Medina lost his footing and comes sliding across the floor. Matthew Johnson knocks that away. Edward Jones gonna check in. Dariel Medina checks out. So a very short spell there for Dariel. Eight on the shot clock. Aggies down nine. Hollis gets it inbounds. Jones for Gee, Gee for three, yes! Purnell Gee strokes it from the outside. He's got six, the Aggies down six. Bennett at point guard. Ball deflects, but right into the hands of Nigro. Johnson. Over for Nigro. Nigro a head fake. Ball the flex in the air, lands in Johnson's hands. Free throw line jumper is good. 18 to 10, Devils shooting very well from the floor to start here. And they lead by eight. Paulus, off for Diaz. Jones for Gee. Purnell drives, dishes, Jordan Gomes hangs, can't quite hit, but Jordan will go to the foul line for two. Foul is on FD of Florham's Joe Nigro. Devils on top now, the stats have 18-9, the scoreboard has 18-10. That mysterious play at the start of the game where the Aggies took two free throws on what looked like a three-point play. Timeout taken by Florham. It's a full timeout. Florham shooting four for six from behind the arc to start the game, six for nine overall. Six points for Whitaker, six points for Nigro. Score update, it's a defensive struggle in Madison, New Jersey. It's six to three with two minutes to play in the first quarter. <laughs> Aggies on top in that one. Other matchups tonight in conference, men and women. Lycoming and DeSales, DeSales hosting and women like homing hosting in men. Arcadia, the other Freedom Conference team in action in men and women, they are playing Widener. Arcadia women beating Widener last night. That was a nice win for them. 
Mr. Accordia, women have the, or men have opted out, so they're not playing, but on the women's side, they will play Wilkes. Mr. Accordia, women beating Wilkes last night. And then the other side of the conference, Eastern and Messiah, Stevenson and Leval, and Albright and Alvernia playing each other. Combs at the free throw line. This should be his second, right? Yes. <laughs> now I'm gum shy about which free throw is which. Jordan hits one of two. Aggies down by seven. Er, yes, we believe. Maybe. 18-11. <laughs> Devils with the substitution. Okay, they did. So they did get, they did just give one free throw as Ortman is fouled. Devils have brought Sean Summers Jr. into the game. Sophomore guard from Montclair, New Jersey. Free throw coming here for Ortman. And first one falls off for Oliver. Second one no good as well. Diaz with the ball, over for Paulus. Jones for Purnell. Mr. Diaz will fire up the three. That's off the mark. He with the rebound. Diaz off for Purnell. Back for Nestor. Nestor over the smaller Joe ben John Bennett for two. Devils won both games between these two teams last year. Devils finished in fourth place in the conference, making the playoffs. They won here at Del Val, 77 to 70. And then won by a dozen at home. And there is another three for Florham. This time, Matthew Johnson for three. The last time the Devils played here, they hit 13 threes. Five of them from Ortman. The game that the Aggies lost despite Damian Washington scoring 44 points. Purnell to the rim. He's on track for a pretty good night himself. Yeah, the Devils still lead 21 to 15. Purnell now with eight points. Mr. Diaz with six. Everybody else combined has one. 21-15. Not inclined to shoot the three. And the ball stolen away by Paulus. All alone, Matthew Paulus for two. And the Aggies cut the lead down to 21 to 15. Seidenberg saying he wants a trap on Bennett, who looks kind of uncomfortable handling the ball. Whitaker blows by Gee, but another steal. Diaz and Gee will get to put on a little show here with a one-hand jam and Jeff Slanovic immediately into a timeout. It is a 6-0 blitz by the Aggies. They get six points in about 50 seconds and FDU Florham takes their second time out. Score at the end of one in Ferguson, New Jersey, or excuse me, Madison, New Jersey, the Ferguson Recreation Center. Delaware Valley, 15, FDU Florham, six. Shane Glenn with six points for the Aggies in the first period. The Aggies looking to win their fourth in a row. Would be their first four game winning streak in about four seasons. And considering where this season started for DelVal, that is quite a finish. Oliver Ortman has Jones and Gee sneaking up on him to trap. Ortman flips it over the top of the defense for Nigro. And now back for Oliver. Ortman for Whitaker. Nigro calls for the ball, guarded by the well, pretty much equally tall Jordan Gomes. Maybe Jordan might have an inch or so on him. Whitaker for three, not this time. Purnell swats that one out of bounds. Two on the shot clock. Purnell has 
an exceptional ability to recover and block shots from behind, that time sort of from the side. Devils will have two seconds to get something off. Nigro looking, and that's not gonna help. Jordan Gomes steals it away, two on one, Jordan to the rack for two. And the Aggies extend this run to 8-0, and we are tied at 21. 10 minutes to play in the first half. Three points now for Jordan. Devils have gone three possessions without getting a shot off. Ortman will fix that. No good, and Gee there for the rebound. Third rebound for Purnell. Jones for Paulus, who thinks three. Ryan Black will shoot it in stride. Back rim, no, but Gomes with the rebound. Spins through the defense, and last touch by Ortman out of bounds. Mentioned the Aggies scoring 65 points per game, giving up the same amount. 40% from the floor, 35% from three. 69% from the foul line is, yikes. <laughs> that would just slipped out of Ryan Black's hand and landed in what would have been the fifth row if we had stands. Hortman bringing the ball down the floor. Over for Nigro. Hand off for Whitaker. Devils doing all their damage from three here. No look pass for Whitaker. Whitaker will settle things down. 10 on the shot clock, 9, 10 on the game clock. Matthew Johnson into the paint. Tough shot there for Johnson. He's got the hair flopping around a la Pete Maravich. And a foul on the, let's see if it's on Nigro or if it's on, no, it's on Johnson. Johnson, a freshman forward, 6'3", from Jefferson Township, New Jersey. And a timeout taken by Del Val, I believe. Johnson, the team's leading scorer, and this is yeah, we mentioned what a difficult year it's been for FDU Florham. You look at their schedule. They start the season against Lycoming. They lose, and Lycoming could end up being the first place team in the conference. Then they play DeSales, who if Lycoming is not the first place team in the conference, it's because DeSales will be. That's, so that's how you start your season. The two teams who are going to play for the championship, you go 0-4 against them. Two games wiped out by COVID that would have been played against Wilkes. Misericordia not playing this year, nor is Stevens, nor is King, so an odd number of games. And then you get to close your season against Del Val, so it sort of feels like it's over before it started. As that one is booted off the foot of the Devil's newest entry, Nicola, no, that's Miles Christian, excuse me. The Devils have a zero and a double zero on their team. I don't think I've ever seen that for basketball. Nor do you rarely get, you rarely get to see zero guarding zero, but that's the case here. The Aggies zero, fires up a zero from the foul line and Devils bring the ball down the floor, 21 apiece. Miles Christian wearing the single zero for the Devils. Aggies have done a great job shutting the Devils out here over the last few minutes. And another steal, yes. Jones hands it off for Paulus, Paulus for the layup. And the Aggies extend this run now to 10 to nothing. And the Devils have five turnovers on the game, nearly a sixth, Nigro catches it. And now they do have a sixth as Nigro mails that to the first throw of the third row of the stands. <laughs> coach, after you floored coach saying, what was that? Aggies by two now. Delaware Valley shooting 59%. It doesn't hurt that the last four shots have been layups. Jones for Medina. Now Ryan Black, who had a good game last night in Jersey. Jones 
Step back jumper from Ed. No. Nope. And rebound controlled by Joe Nigro. Devils have brought Gerald Nicholson into the game, number three. Nicholson with the bright red shoes. Tommy Drabola spins and takes an extra step for the traveling violation. <laughs> Coach Slonovic, it's, a, it's a basically an empty gym, right? Other than the two teams and me and the few staffers. So you can hear everything he says. And he says, all of a sudden, we can't make a shot. We can't, we can't pass the ball. After looking like the Golden State Warriors for the first four minutes, Devils have uh, come back down to earth. Paulus, three on the shot clock, and he won't get anything off. Here's a steal for Sean Summers. Summers on Jones. Jones tries to draw the charge, and it works. Now, Jones was outside the arc. <laughs> I'm sorry. Coach Slidovic is so animated. For some reason, I don't know. I mean, he's not the first animated coach we've seen, but it just seems funnier for some reason with him. Casey Stitzel, the longtime head coach here, was certainly not a uh, was not a stoic individual. I remember uh, Jeff as a player. He was a real good guard at Misericordia. Twenty three, twenty one. Aggies by two. Key for Paulus. Black trying to force the issue down low, and Summers with his second straight steal. Devils haven't scored in a while now. Five and a half minutes to be exact. This is Nicholson, guarded by Medina. Trebolis. Miles Christian faces up. Ryan Black pokes that away, nine on the clock. Devils with somebody open somewhere. Nicholson for three, no. And Gee with the rebound. Paulus down the floor. Gomes to his left. It's four on two. And that ended up somehow going odd off of FDU floor. <laughs> Seidingberg showing what he wants to be done. Plant your feet and shoot. Edward Jones checks in. So it's Jones, Paulus, Gomes, Medina, and Purnell, the five on the floor. Delaware Valley with a two-point lead as Medina drives in, tough shot, and he's fouled by Oliver Ortman. Foul on Ortman, that will be his first, fifth overall for the Devils. Aggies only have two fouls, but they're on the same guy, Nestor Diaz, who's sitting. Free throw up and good for Dario. Ariel has appeared in eight of the nine games this year. Scoring seven points per game, so up his season average up from last year, and he's shown a nice ability to stroke the three. Still not quite used to the shorter hair on Dariel. He used to have the long, bushy, flowing ponytail last season. Three from Miles Christian rattles out, and Joe Nigro going to get called for going over the back. Aggies, the next time we see them on this floor, unless they do happen to host one of those bonus games next week, I would think the team would look pretty different. Damian Washington would probably be back, team's leading scorer and rebounder from a year ago. Jordan Tucker, Devin Hill, we hope to see them back as well. And as Gomes drives in, high off the glass, no good. Not really sure what the future holds for the other seniors that are on this team now, like Matt and Purnell. Ryan Black would be back next year. He's a junior. And Jordan's just a freshman, so he'll definitely be back. Three from Ortman, and when all else fails, let him shoot. Ortman coming into the game tonight, if you can believe it, was one for 18 from three. And we said last night that 
eventually players regress to the mean or progress to the mean, which means he's due to hit about nine of them tonight. Cordell Gee, tough shot, won't roll home. Dario Medina battling for the rebound, but Johnson eventually controls. Aggies by one. That three from Ortwin was just his second of the year. And step through, Oliver is fouled, and Oliver will head to the free throw line. He does not shoot the ball like someone who's two for 21 this year from three. He's not shy about it. And there's six of 12 tonight. Ortman, who's the only player to attempt the free throw, rattles that one home. Ortman now 11 for 17 from the foul line tonight. Six points for Oliver. And it'll stay at six as that one rolls off. 25 apiece. Teams have combined two for their last 12 from the floor. Jordan Gomes calls for the ball down low. Paul is for three. Nope. Rebound by Miles, uh, excuse me, at Sean Summers Jr. Freshman guard from St. Joseph by the Sea, Gerald Nicholson, wrong team. Ed Jones, two tra players trailing him, but Ed won't need the help. He just lays it in himself. 27-25, Delaware Valley up by two. The ninth turnover by the Devils. Ortman for Whitaker. Back for Oliver. And now for Johnson, who hasn't shot the ball much here tonight yet. Johnson, five points. Whitaker with an open three, and that is good. Whitaker now three for five from behind the arc. He's got nine. And the Devils by one. Edward Jones blows right by his defender and lays it in for two. Four points for Edward, 29-28. Aggies by one. Nicholson off the screen. And Jones. Good effort there from Jones who knocked the ball away off of the referee. FDU Florham will bring Tommy Drabolis back in. Nicholson heads to the sideline to talk to the FDU Florham coaching staff. 29-28, Aggies on top by one. Five on the shot clock. Johnson for Summers, two on the shot clock, and they did not get it off. They just lost track of the time as a shot clock violation on FDU. Dario Medina checks in, Ed Jones to the bench. Delaware Valley in the women's game leading 22 to 16. About midway through the second period. He, nice move, but couldn't finish. Ball deflects around and Ortman controls. Twenty-nine, twenty-eight. I don't know if Whitaker was looking for the ball, but he got it anyway. Summers for Johnson. And Dario Medina. It's called for the foul. It is the fourth foul on Delaware Valley. Devils with six, so the next one would send Delaware Valley to the single bonus. Pass, and as Jordan Gomes steps in front of the lane and takes it away. Purnell thinks three, thinks it again. Gives it off for Gomes. Gomes hesitates, shot, no. His own rebound teammate battling for the ball, Nestor Diaz. Can't get it to fall, but Diaz is fouled and goes to the free throw line. D. 
Diaz with the free throw. Nestor now seven points on the evening. Nestor this season averaging a little under seven. To go with five rebounds. Second on the team in steals and assists. And Nestor hits them both. Delaware Valley with a three point lead. Nestor nearly got that one deflect off of Ortman and then runs into Ortman. Johnson for Whitaker. Whitaker, head fake, open look from wherever he wants it, leaves it short. Jones for Gee, for Paulus, for Gomes, for Nestor, wide open. Oh, good ball movement. Couldn't get it to drop, but excellent ball movement for Del Val. Everybody touched it. Aggies look to trap on Ortman, and Ortman looking for a timeout gets it. Ortman frustrated. He wanted the timeout faster than that. He gets whacked. 30 second timeout taken by FDU. Now the women's game is tight. Delaware Valley 24, Florham 22. The Devils have hit five threes tonight. I'd have to check, but they were really struggling to shoot threes. FDU breaks the huddle with Johnson, Ortman, Whitaker, Summers, and Drabolas. The five on the floor. Four starters plus Summers in place of Nigro. Eight on the shot clock, under a minute on the game clock here in the first half, and Summers loses it momentarily, gets it back, Ortman for three, got it! Oliver Ortman, second three of the good night doubling what he had all season coming into the game. And it's 31 apiece. Paulus for Purnell. Pass to Jones. Jones is going to get called for a jump ball. Possession arrow in favor of Delaware Valley. Dario Medina checks in. Seven second differential between shot and game clock. Tied at 31. Purnell calling for the ball, trying to post up on Johnson down low. Now they get it to Purnell. Spins on Johnson, reverse layup. Low fall for Purnell, but he'll get two free throws. Boy, he's got that move down pat. His long arms. And Purnell, who's started every game this season. Nagy's have had this, actually the same starting lineup for every single game. Purnell's first free throw is off the mark. Transfer from Penn State Abington. A former Nittany Lion. And Purnell, that one rolls home. Aggies by one, 12 seconds to play in the first half. Summers comes into a trap and pass to Flex and Jordan Gomes. I'll get that. Six seconds to play in the first half. Ortman with the ball. Five, four, three. Ortman fires up a bomb. Almost hits it, too. Off the mark, and that's the way the first half comes to a close. Delaware Valley with a narrow one-point lead here, 32-31. And on the women's side, well, the Aggies caught fire in the last minute. They lead 31-23 there. 
We'll take a break. We'll come back in about 10 minutes with your first half statistics. You're watching Aggies Live.
what you can't tell from the camera angle, but trust me, there's still a basketball game going on here. It doesn't, looks like there's nobody here and we're filming a near empty gym except for the guy over there at the scoreboard table, that's it. But they'll come back eventually and until they do, let's get you some first half scores. Again, women's side of things, Delaware Valley playing with what we believe is a, for a bid in the conference championship game and the Aggies lead FDU Florham 31 to 23. Again, we think Delaware Valley has the tiebreaker on Misericordia, who is also playing tonight. And Misericordia is also leading by almost exactly the same score as Misericordia leads Wilkes 32, or excuse me, 30 to 23. On the men's side of things, Lycoming and DeSales played earlier tonight. And somebody has, we finally found somebody who can play with the sales in basketball. Lycoming defeats the Bulldogs 75-62 in Williamsport. Those teams will meet again tomorrow. The normal Thursday, Friday schedule was uh, switched because DeSales had a tragedy over the weekend where one of their baseball players was killed in a car accident. So they were, uh, took yesterday, or took the uh, season, or the schedule and pushed it back a day. Bulldogs lost to Lycoming in what will be the most unpleasant drive of the Freedom Conference for teams in this part of the state, at least. It is just a long, long drive to Williamsport. Feels longer than it is, but it's pretty long by our standards. Those teams will meet again tomorrow if the Sales wins. They host the championship game on the men's and women's side. If the Warriors pull off the sweep, then they get to invite DeSales back to their place next Thursday night. Looking at the standings again, Delaware Valley is, let's see, they're three and five if the Aggies manage to win here tonight. Obviously that would make them four and five. We look at the standings for where that would put them. Again, with Lycoming and DeSales going 1-2, Arcadio is pretty much locked in three. And then the Aggies would have a split with Wilkes. But Wilkes has one more game in hand as we actually looked at the schedule over the... Yes, we already said hello to them. Yeah, we mentioned because of, of Joe's uh, brother. Yeah, hello to the Nigro family. <laughs> I don't know if Mario is watching, but Mr. and Mrs. Nigro. Sorry you can't be here to watch your other son in a place you've hopefully made a lot of good athletic memories. Remember, Mario will forever be etched in my memory with his spin move down the sideline and the touchdown against Bridgewater College in the playoffs a couple of years ago. Anyway, to complete the thought from a moment ago, Arcadia will be the three seed, meaning they'll play number three on the Commonwealth side. The Aggies will be four or five. Wilkes has one more game in conference as they rescheduled one of the two games uh, canceled against FDU Florham, who will get one more game on both the women's and the men's side. That will be on Monday. Scheduling on the fly in the pandemic just becoming a way of life. If Wilkes should win that game, then the Aggies would be fifth. If Wilkes loses that game, then the Aggies would be fourth. And as we mentioned before, the Commonwealth side, it is virtually, uh, it is up for grabs, although their, their top two teams are pretty well set too. The uh, Lebanon Valley Flying Dutchman are seven and one. The Aggies played the Flying Dutchman pretty close in Anvil earlier this year. Albright is five and one. The Aggies split the season series with Albright. And then you've got Alvernia, Widener, Messiah, and Stevenson in typical Commonwealth Conference fashion all piled on top of each other. So the Aggies could play really any of those four teams and whether it would be home or away, we really have no idea. But it would be Thursday. We're pretty confident of that. <laughs> Other scores tonight from the other side of the co of the Middle Atlantic Conference. Albright leading Alvernia 41-38. Arcadia putting a hurt on Widener. That's 52-32 at the half. As Daquan Davis heads towards the end of his Division III career. As we mentioned, Daquan already has a uh, scholarship 
at the University of North Texas for next year. A rare case where because of the transfer rules, he can transfer to Division I. He's got that set up. He will do a graduate degree at University of North Texas, I believe, where he's got the extra year. And kudos to him for deciding to stick with Arcadia. He really could have called it a career there and decided to preserve himself and avoid any injury. But I think if we've learned anything about the people who are on the floor here tonight and across the season, it's how much they enjoy basketball and just any opportunity to play in any situation. Devils will start with Mr. and Mrs. Nigro's favorite player, Joe Nigro, Oliver Nortman. Daryl Whitaker, Matthew Johnson, and Tommy Drabolas, the five starters on the floor. Devils down one, 32-31. Ortman, good hands there from Nestor Diaz, who slaps that away. I have to be impressed by what Nestor brings to the team. He just does all the little things well. He's got his scoring average up. Plays good defense. One of the few guys who's able to play Daquan Davis closely. Now, Davis got him to foul out <laughs> eventually, but Nestor's a good defender. Whitaker's a guy worth defending. He had a bunch of threes in the first half, but he's short here. Paulus Black, wide open Jordan Gomes, who is not a starter, but is in the lineup for Ibadapo. Diaz and Guy, the five on the floor, and Diaz nearly stripped that one away. Gomes, Gomes with his Second straight solid performance. He's got five tonight. He had 21 to lead all scorers last night. Whitaker. Pass for Drabullis, who's been quiet so far. Joe Nigro, head fake. Up shot, and Gee with the rebound. Ryan Black for three. No. And Matthew Johnson snares the rebound. Thirty-four, thirty-one, Delaware Valley by three. Devils led by eight at one point. Ortman uses that wide body but can't get the shot to drop. Aggie's largest lead is, well, this right here, three. Paulus, somebody's got to move. Gets it in for Diaz. Black, eh, a little miscommunication there as Black wanted to try and get it to Gomes. Aggies in the first half, shot 46%. They were just one for eight from three, but seven for nine from the foul line. The Devils, 50% and eight of 15 from three. Eight of 15 from three. Two of five from everywhere else. They only took five shots inside the free throw, uh, three point line. Whitaker, again. Four three of the night for Whitaker. He's got 12, tied at 34. Derek Whitaker, the sophomore guard. Some nice touch there. for Gomes, for Diaz. Diaz in the paint outside. Black will try the three. Got it. Ryan Black for three. First basket of the night for Ryan, who had 12 points last night. And the Aggies back up by three, just the second three overall for DelVal. Whitaker for Drabellis, who is bumped and fouled by, see if they get Matt or Purnell with that. It's on Purnell. That's his first. Mr. Diaz with two fouls. The rest of the team combined only has three. Nobody in foul trouble. Ortman, Nigro, and Johnson with two apiece. Three for Drabolas, no good. And Gee with another rebound. That is the sixth of the game for Purnell. Paulus, oh, I'm not sure what happened there. Matt, that's his favorite shot, but for whatever reason. <laughs> Look like the, in the video games where you hit the wrong button and you wanted to pass and you go to shoot and then you end up gonna do it neither. That's what it looked like there. Somebody hit the X button. Go, 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 
Black drives and I think they hit the X button inadvertently again as Black fires that to the sideline. Sixth turnover of the night for Del Val. Aggies are a plus one, seven assists to six turnovers. Devils a minus two, nine up to 11 down. Three for Nigro. Nope. Johnson taps that all the way off the glass. Key with his seventh rebound. Wallace will shoot the three this time. That's an air ball. Hortman down the floor. Look for Whitaker, he's got the hot hand. And Coach Slonovic really wanted him to shoot there. Ten on the clock, Ortman. A lot of contact, handful of travels. As FDU's head coach tells Whitaker, put it up. Whitaker's four for eight, and four for six from behind the arc. Johnson, nice move. Channeling his inner Kareem there. Hook shot from Johnson cuts the Aggies lead to one. It's 37-36. Paulus for Gee. Thinks about going to uh, Diaz. Fires up a line drive, miss instead. Nigro with the rebound. Nigro now has nine rebounds in the game. Nortman blows by his defender, missed, but Johnson can follow. And the Devils back in front, 38-37. to play. Purnell thinks about a three. That one's off the mark. And Nigro with the rebound again, so he's already up to double digits in that category. Devils with a two rebound advantage, Nigro thinks three. Hands the ball off. Johnson, nice move, couldn't finish. FDU bench wanted a foul. Paulus for Black, back for Matt. Matt's two for six, but 0 for three from three, and his two free field goals were both layups off of steals. Yeah, Diaz blows by, gets blocked and fouled. Either Ortman or Joe Nigro will pick it up. It's on Oliver Ortman, that's his third. So back to the free throw line goes Nestor Diaz. First one's no good. Nestor from Spring City, Pennsylvania. If it's the one I'm thinking it is, that's near York. So that one's up and good. Tied at 38. Ryan Black fighting with his own teammate. Doesn't realize it for the ball. And Jones throws that away, and a little confusion, but they're going to give it back to, Del, uh, to Florham. I don't think Jones and Black realized who they were battling with, but it was each other. apiece. Miles Christian back in for the Devils. Christian, Ortman, Summers who's checked back in. Johnson and Whitaker. Sean Summers Jr. back out on the floor. Johnson draws a crowd. Summers thinks three. Zips it over for Whitaker who will happily take it. Short no good. Johnson kicked that off his own foot. And then Johnson is sitting on top of Matt Paulus, who I think will get called for the foul. Using him like a bench. Fouls on Matt, that's his first team second of the second half. Ortman to inbound. 
Nice steal from Ryan Black. Up ahead for Jordan Gomes. Gomes left it short. Paulus with the follow. Neither one of them come and get the basket. Now three on one fast break. That one's painful. Summers for Christian. Whitaker guarded by Jones. Down low for Miles Christian. Johnson, big man with some three point range. Yes. Not Johnson for three. Johnson, four for 14 coming into the game from behind the arc, so not shy about shooting him. Not hitting him at a very high percentage, but he does there, and the Devils back up by three. Johnson with 12 now. Six on the clock. Jordan Gomes can't control the pass. And the Devils will take over. Aggies women's team putting some distance between themselves and FDU Florham. That's 46-29 now. Smiles Christian comes down the floor. Johnson for three again. Yes! Matt Johnson, 15 points, and the big man has nice range. Johnson, four for his last five, and three for three from behind the arc. Devils with their largest, well, not quite. Second largest lead at six, and Jones is bumped and out of bounds by Miles Christian. That is Miles' first foul. Brunel Gee will check back in. Ryan Black to the bench. Kick save off of Miles' foot. Aggies will reset. Del Val women getting a big game from Shane Glenn, 17 points in that one. Brunel Gee is trapped among the trees, gets it off for Jones, and calls timeout. Tomorrow is the start in earnest of the spring sports season. They had one lacrosse game on the men's and women's side last week. And a softball doubleheader, but conference play starts tomorrow, at least for baseball. Stevens and Delaware Valley will play a doubleheader here in Doylestown, and then a single game up in Hoboken, New Jersey, where Stevens will host. Softball team was supposed to play Misericordia, but they're still drawn or falling out up there, so that game is canceled. Diaz, Jones, Medina. Gomes and Gee, the five on the floor for the Aggies, who are now down six because Matt Johnson has caught fire from behind the arc. Gomes drives on Johnson, gets him in the air, got it, count it, going to the line. Good strength from Jordan Gomes, who just muscles through Johnson for two. Three-point play opportunity here for the freshman. These two guys can see a lot of each other over the next four years. Both of them freshmen, as we mentioned before, this season does not count for athletic eligibility. It is Johnson's third foul. So Aggie's happy to see him go to the bench. And Jordan softly rolls home the free throw. Jordan up to nine points now. 44-41, Aggies. Clogging up the backcourt here with all kinds of bodies. Gomes with the steal. Three on one. Gomes in. Got it. No foul, but Jordan Gomes with five quick points, and the Aggies down one. And Gomes now 11. Ortman. And there's another trap opportunity for Del Val. A little slow to get there. 
And now the Devils will bring it up the floor. Unabated. And a charge called on Sean Summers. FDU Florham saying that the Aggies player was in the arc, but I think he was in the arc after he was knocked into it by Summers. Of course, I'm perhaps not the most unbiased source. 44-43, Aggies down by one. Second time in this game that the Devils opened up a lead and the Aggies rapidly erased it. Ball is for Jones. Gomes calling for the ball now with the much smaller Summers on him. Paulus for Jones. Eight on the clock. Edward drives to the rim. Tough shot. Pernell Gee tries to follow. Diaz takes a swipe at it. And Gee throws it off of Summers. Nice play by Pernell. Good awareness there. Ten fifty-five. to play, Delaware Valley down by one in what will be the final game of the regular season before the Aggies get one more bonus game next Thursday. Devils will have, we think, two more, one on Monday against Wilkes and then their bonus game as well. Ortman with the steal, takes it away from Gomes. And Purnell bumps and fouls Ortman. That is Purnell's second foul, second Aggie to hit two. Ortman. Up the floor for Tommy Drabullis. Christian calls for the ball, instead they hand it off for Nigro. Back for Ortman. 15 on the shot clock, Devil's gonna get a shot opportunity for the first time in a while. Ortman, soft touch, no, Gee with the rebound. Nine rebounds now for Purnell. Paulus will try the three. Yes, Matt Paulus for three. And you can see that he's happy to snap out of this little dry streak there. And the Aggies back up by two. Third three of the game for Del Dow. They are three for 14. Devils 11 for 21, Ortman. Soft touch, Oliver finds the range, he's got 11. Johnson 15, Whitaker 12, Oliver Ortman 11 for Florham. Gee with 11, Nestor Diaz with nine, and Jordan Gomes with 10 for Del Val. And a foul on Joe Nigro, that'll be his third. So Nigro and Johnson both with three, and I think we're gonna get one for the other right here, nope. Johnson in, Niles Christian will get a break. FDU Florham will take a timeout. Final 24 seconds in the third period of the women's game. The Aggies have opened things up in a big way, outscoring Florham 27 to six in the third quarter. It's 58-29 Delaware Valley. Is suddenly the Aggies are an unstoppable juggernaut. <laughs> Shane Glenn, 19 points, 14 for Haley Keenan, 13 for Emily Kutzkel. Two blocks. In all seriousness, not that they're watching this because they're playing their game, but congratulations to Delaware Valley who, on the women's side, who again, was as, as deep a funk as you could be, had not won a game since November of 2019. And sometimes all you need is just one to get things going. They beat Wilkes here, beat them handily up there. Had a rare, comfortable home win last night. And unless something dramatically changes in the next 10 minutes and 15 seconds, they're gonna have a four game winning streak. Now, I think they get to sales next and that could be an unhappy way to end the season, but you know some of these teams, you look at them, you go, what do you take away from this year? For instance, the, the Del Val men, I'm not really sure, because they're gonna have so many guys who would play a lot of minutes back next year who just aren't here right now, like Damian Washington. But for the women, that's not the case. They will get Dom Moser back. He's an all-conference guard, but for the most part, what you see is what you get for them next year. So this is 
The momentum will should carry over very nicely for next season. Gee with the foul line jumper here, no good, and the Devils with the rebound. 46 apiece, 9.17 to play. Nigro for Drabullis. For Whitaker, who shakes free, hesitates and, ooh. For whatever reason, Whitaker looks way more comfortable shooting it from far away. Key outside, Gomes thinks three. Jordan spins and he traveled. Eighth turnover for Delaware Valley. Devils with 13. Portman, Trambolis, and Jordan Gomes with the foul. That is the fourth foul on Del Val. Just the first on Jordan, and not a bad idea. Jordan just a half second too slow, but certainly the right idea. Now we go see if the Devils go right back to Johnson. Johnson has the height on Gomes. Well, Wortman not going to need that. Wortman goes right to the rim for two. 48-46. 13 now for Oliver. He's got the last four for FDU. Nestor Diaz asks Gomes to come out. Gomes. A charge called as he goes crashing into the foul, into the underneath the rim. Second foul on Jordan. Devils take over down by two. Or up by two, excuse me. And Edward Jones knocks that one away. Bellis for Oliver Ortman. He's kind of taking over point guard duties here at this point. Nigro for a wide open Whitaker. No, that time he missed. And Jordan Gomes has picked up his third foul in about 60 seconds. Ryan Black will check in. Thomas Ibadapo started the game. I don't think he's played since the first minute or two. I'm not sure if it's an injury or what it is. 48-46. May simply be that Coach Seidenberg just likes the matchup with the smaller, faster forwards. Oliver for three, yikes. That's off the mark, Matt Paulus with the rebound. D. Diaz for Paulus for Jones. He calling for the ball, gets it in a tough spot. Oh my, rifles it off of Nestor Diaz's head. And Nestor gets it back and shoots a left-handed hook shot. Well, that is not terribly pretty, but it ends up in two points. Ouch. <laughs> Tied at 48 again. Diaz to double figures, he's got 11. Drabullis for Nigro. Bortman, it's by Paulus. Uh-oh. No, not this time. Whitaker misses. And Jones will cut against the grain and get some space. Edward Jones. Do they want a timeout? Okay, I was gonna say, otherwise they're running this play from a very weird spot. 48-48. Aggies with three timeouts left, FDU Florham with two. Aggies up 28 now in the women's game.
48-48, Delaware Valley with the ball, under seven minutes to play. Paulus, Diaz, Jones, Black, and Gee, the five on the floor. Ed Jones nicely set up, not really Edwards' shot though, and he's short. Nicely designed, just maybe not the guy you want shooting at three. Yeah, that's what you want Edward doing. Stealing the ball, driving in, and boy, maybe getting bailed out with the foul. But that's Jones's game in the open court. Jones will go to the free throw line. This season he is one for 10 from three, one for nine now. 57% free throw shooter, six points per game. Free throw up and good. One thing you could say about the Aggies this year, you looked at the roster to start the season and I honestly did not know where they were gonna get points from because their top four scorers from a year ago either did not return or in Mike Chinchilli's case graduated. But pretty much everyone on the team has upped their scoring average, including Edward. He gets both, Edward has, Nestor has, Dario Medina has. Paulus didn't play last year due to injury. Black wasn't with the team, neither was Guy. So the Aggies and Coach Seidenberg and for one week, Austin Stokel have pieced together a competitive roster here in difficult circumstances. Sean Summers for three, no. Trebolis, unable to control the rebound. Matt Paulus comes away with it. Aggies with a two point lead. Gee matched up with Johnson. Paulus, over for Jones. Jones drives, nice. Nicely done by Edward Jones Jr. Off the glass for two. Jones has got four straight. Aggies have a four point lead. Under five and a half minutes to play here in regulation. Wortman slips it off for Whitaker who's gone a little cold after hitting a bunch of threes. Johnson will fire it up. That time no good. Purnell with yet another rebound. Ten rebounds for Purnell, 13 for Nigro. Those are the two team leaders. Double-double now for Purnell, 11 points, 10 boards. Nine on the shot clock. Paulus. They want the foul, but they want the shot, but instead it'll be a foul and one and one, and at the risk of being presumptuous, that's almost as good, because Matt Paulus is an 86% free throw shooter. There's the first. 25 of 29 on the season is Matt. Second on the teams in attempts to Purnell, who's got 31 now. Matt gets them both. 6-0 run here for Delval, up by six. 4.46 to play. And Purnell. Lots of hair in that matchup between Purnell and Matt Johnson. <laughs> and Ortman will call timeout. Keep an eye on the women's game. The Aggies have run away and hide. It's 60 to 32, Delvell. Shane Glenn, 19 points, nine of 13 from the floor. Haley Keenan, another good night. 14 points for the freshman, 13 for Emily Kutzkel. Two blocks, five rebounds. Taylor Richardson, only five points, but 11 rebounds and six assists.
<laughs> Aggies an 8-0 run over the last four minutes. They lead 54 to 48. Aggies shooting 45%, just three of 15 from behind the arc. The Devils continue to shoot 42% from three and almost never from inside of that. They have six field goals, and it's not quite as bad as it was in the first half when they only attempted five two-point shots and 15 threes. They could use a couple of threes here now, down six. Ryan Black playing about 25 feet off of Darryl, off of Whitaker and ends up being a traveling violation on Florham. I don't know, I, I guess the Aggies were in a zone there? That was, that was strange, because Black was, if he was covering Whitaker, he was not covering Whitaker. Jones for Paulus. Nine on the shot clock, Diaz. Miscommunication there. Joe Nigro checks in, replaces Sean Summers. And the Devils, oh my. That's a heck of a save there. Ortman managed to save that off of Diaz. Two effort players there, and the Devils retain possession on what was a really bad inbounds pass. Trebolis, Ortman, Whitaker, Nigro, and Johnson, the five starters on the floor for Florham. And Drabellis to Johnson, who will look for some help immediately. Fifty-four forty-eight, under four minutes to play. Devils approaching a five-minute scoring drought now. Ortman, no. Ryan Black with the rebound. Maggie's content to just slow this down, run a little bit of clock. Trying to go to four and five on the season and 500 in conference in what will be the last game of the abbreviated regular season. Black, Paulus, Diaz. And Diaz drives in, weaves his way to the rim for an easy two. Nestor Diaz had 13 points now for Nestor. Oh, Ortman. That was a, a tough pass for a long distance. Season high and now career high for Nestor in this one. He had 12 against Arcadia. And Purnell gets called for the foul there on that one. I think that's Coach Seidenberg who's yelling. Frustrated with the call. And two free throws here for Johnson. Johnson is 75% free throw shooter, but as we mentioned before, keep in mind, FU Florham has not played, I think, for two weeks, three weeks before this week. Two games at Lycoming, two games at the sales, and then a bunch of games canceled due to COVID before being able to get back out on the court this week. 56-49. Devils were supposed, well, would have been matched up with Miss Recordia last week, but Miss Recordia's men opted out of the season. So while the women played for Florham, the men did not. Oh, Guy, nice move. And then he hands it off to the wrong team. Whitaker with the steal. Devils down seven with 2.18 to play. Ortman, whoops. Diaz up in front. Jones and Nestor. Well, the Aggies won an intentional foul, but that's that was a clean foul. <laughs> I 
Officials telling Coach Seidenberg to relax. <laughs> I didn't think it was a clear path foul. I may be wrong though, because meanwhile, we were all focused on Nestor. Purnell Gee is back behind the play and hurt. So he's Purnell slow to get up. And he comes off the floor dazed. Ouch. Well, looks like Mark is going to win the day here. He's Nestor's going to get a technical free throw. So Diaz's career high prior to tonight was 12 in 31 minutes against Arcadia. The game we mentioned earlier where he was defending Daquan Davis, who will probably be the conference player of the year. Okay, flagrant one on Oliver Ortman. It's also his fourth foul. So Ortman and Nigro have four apiece. And Nestor rattles in the first free throw. Four for five from the line tonight for Nestor. Three rebounds, two assists. One to two here. Aggies back up by eight. It's an 11 1 run here for Del Val over the last six and a half minutes. Delaware Valley will also get the ball because it was a flagrant foul. Two minutes and six seconds left. Aggies trying to wrap up a sweep of Florham here, having won in New Jersey last night. Would be the second home win for Delaware Valley this season, who beat Albright here at home. Paulus for Diaz. Diaz. Four on the clock, Paulus will take the three, and it rattles home! Master Diaz kicks out, Matt Paulus gets the friendly home roll, and the Aggies are up 11 with 91 seconds to play. Coach Seidenberg saying, don't foul, don't foul. Summer's wide open, he'll take the three. And that's off the rim, no good. Jordan Gomes with the rebound, and the Aggies We'll slow it down and run the clock down, now up 11. Oh, what a closing spurt here. After the Devils went up by six, the Aggies have taken over this game. Held FDU Florham to one point. Tommy Drabolis with the foul. Free throws coming here for Edward Jones. A chance for us to thank our broadcast team, Arabella Verducci on camera for most of these games. Brian both producing and taking uh, photos. <laughs> Executive producer extraordinaire, Chris Elliott. It's felt a little weird, but it's been a lot of fun. Very, very nice to be back on campus for these games. Jones gets them both. 62-49, Delaware Valley on top by 13 final minute of the regular season. And again, we believe likely the final minute of D3 basketball here at Del Val at home this year. Jones <laughs> still pushing for that one more possession. His teammate smiling at Edward, who's all heart and all effort. Aggie's gonna get some bodies in who have not seen a lot of time this season. You see your number 33, that's Ryan Schnabel. Number 23, that's Francis Robles. And Jaquan Haynes, that's him number there, uh, number five for Del Val. And Robles blocks the shot. Haynes played a little bit last night, as did Schnabel. 
Robles was a contributor last year. He had some injury issues this season. Trabolas drives in, shot no good. Ryan Schnabel with the rebound. And finds Ryan Black. Jaquan Hades down the floor. And Hades is fouled. He's going to get free throws. A chance here for Jaquan to get some points. I knew the bench would react <laughs> to that. Jaquan with a free throw. Second one coming. Two points for Jaquan. Aggies up by 14. Whitaker for Jabalis. Jabalis is to take his pick. Three on the way, up and off the back rim for Jaden Walsh, the freshman from Emmaus, Pennsylvania, who's checked in. Three for Drabolas, no. And Francis Robles puts a wrap on this one. <laughs> I thought he was gonna take a shot. Robles will dribble out the final five seconds. Well, the Aggies. <laughs> Undermanned and undersized, but they showed a lot of heart this year. and They finished the season, or at least this portion of it, with one more bonus game against an opponent and at a, uh, a time to be named later. They finished with the victory here this evening. Your final score, Delaware Valley, 64. FDU Florham, 49. Women also victorious, so we believe they will play in the Freedom Conference title game on Thursday. They win easily, 62-39. So congratulations to the Aggies both men and women sweeping their week series. Aggies shoot 48% in the game, 14 points for Nestor Diaz. Aggies put four players in double figures, 12 apiece for Matt Paulus and Jordan Gomes, 11 for Purnell Gee. Devils were led by Matt Johnson, who had 16, 13 for Oliver Ortman, and 12 for Derek Whitaker. Our player of the game, we're gonna give it to Nestor Diaz, 14 points, four rebounds, and three assists in 33 minutes for the Spring City native. For Brian and Arabella and Chris and everyone here, have a good weekend, everyone.